Hello everyone, this is Peter Rutter from VFE Pedals. This update's going to be a little bit long because I've got a lot to share and I wanted to make a video update to do so. But first I wanted to say thank you for all the check-ins and well wishes for me and my family during this uncertain time. I'm happy to say that we are safe and healthy and I am privileged to be a public school teacher who gets to work from home and still receive a paycheck. And I know that's not true for everyone right now. One of my goals this spring has been to keep VFE in a position to issue refunds should any of my customers lose their job and need the resources to help pay bills. Um, so far, I've been able to issue all refunds and I'll continue to do so as much as I am able to. As for exact ship dates, it's impossible for me to give you an exact timeline, though at the end of this video, I will give you a more generalized timeline of when things will ship. But what I wanted to spend most of this video doing was giving you a comparison of all of the pedals that I've developed so far. Uh, including some that are in development as well. It won't be a completely exhaustive list as I'm still working out some details, but I hope this will be helpful information for those of you still deciding whether or not to make purchases or what effect you want. Here's an example of the design and construction of the previous version of pedals. As you can see, there are three larger knobs and then three smaller controls, either little mini knobs or toggle switches. And then you had your side mounted jacks, on the inside, you had a, a circuit board here that was for switching and power management and other things. And then the main effect board up here. And then you had the ability to use a nine volt uh, battery as your power supply. I wanted to compare that to the updated version. So here is the updated version. As you can see, there are three rows of controls. In some cases, as you'll see, some of these controls are switches. Um, the jacks are all mounted up top. Because of that, the enclosure is just a slightly taller, but it's the same exact footprint. So when it comes to actually installing them on the pedal board, which is one of the um, design goals for this, this will be able to fit much nicer on a pedal board and fit more compactly on one as well. As for the internal construction, there is a difference in the location of this switching system and where the jacks are, of course, but also this adds a bunch of new functionality. One of the big things I just want to highlight here is there's a variable voltage trim pot, but this voltage is actually semi-regulated, uh, which means that if you plug in 9 volts or 12 volts or 18 volts, it will actually output the same to the pedal regardless of what you put in. As you can see, there also is no battery snap. One of my design goals was to optimize this for use on a pedal board and having space for a large nine volt battery actually made it impossible to really achieve those goals fully. Next, I'm gonna go pedal by pedal with a summary of the updates I made to the circuit. First up is the Merman. In the original design, I stuck really, really closely to uh, basically a clone. Uh, but with m controls that allowed the user to modify uh, the tone and but what i found was there were some significant limitations particularly in the range of the bottom and warm controls and the fact that you had only one clipping variation uh, just changing the compression of the germanium diodes so in this version i updated those things the bottom and the warm controls can get much louder than they could before so they have a much wider range um, the compression control has both a germanium clipping option and a, a silicone one and you can uh, put it to the middle to re reduce or remove most or all the clipping. I also went in to update the design to have a much lower thermal noise floor and included um, an optional buffered bypass which was requested by many. The Scream doesn't feature any major updates. My primary design goal was actually just to honor the original classic Tube Screamer design and just give the player more control over it and just make it easier to fine tune and of course lower that noise floor. It does utilize this variable voltage control so you can plug in 9 volts, 12 volts, 18 volts but then use this trim pot to adjust what sort of output you want and to tune it to your taste. With the ice cream, because its main application is working with higher gain amplifiers, uh, I had two primary design goals. One was to lower the noise floor significantly, and I did so by reducing thermal noise um, in the design, and then also using a lower, lower noise 
op amp. Um, and then the other design goal was to make the clipping options on the inside have a much wider range of available tones and to be more dynamic, meaning that it will work better with that high gain amplifier because it actually still has some dynamic range to it. I should note that some of the graphics, you know, like that one, uh, are definitely not the finalized uh, version. These are just sort of me sketching out some ideas and uh, some of them will stick and some of them will definitely change. That said, let's get to the other three overdrive pedals. Here we have the Pale Horse. One of the design goals with the Pale Horse was to improve the range of the fat control. Even when you cut it fully in the previous version, the uh, bass only cut to a certain sort of floor and then it uh, leveled off. And because of that, it was harder to dial in sounds that really cut through um, and really had that sort of mid saturation. So that's been improved in this one, along with, you know, all these typical things that have been saying like lower noise, dynamic range, all that kind of stuff. But that's kind of uh, ubiquitous across uh, the lineup. One thing I do want to mention is that all the overdrive pedals have a buffered switching option. So rather than pointing out on all of them, they all do have that option built in, which uses a buffer within the circuit itself. And so it's unique to each pedal. The Dragon is a more recent design. So there weren't as many sort of changes to make. The only real change that I made was the adding of this compression control, which will allow you to choose between symmetrical and asymmetrical clipping and dial in the exact compression level that you want. The compression controls on all the dirt pedals that I've designed, they're either labeled comp or hard or soft. They've been designed to allow you to essentially control the compression ratio of a dirty signal. What that does is have the clipping be more aggressive and add more sustain and kind of the typical drive pedal um, circuit or you can sort of lift that ratio up and it gives this something similar to like a clean blended sound, but not exactly that way, but it's much more dynamic and it stacks better. And using it with an amplifier that's already breaking up allows that interaction to be uh, more natural sounding. And lastly, we have the Blues King and outside of the things that we've been talking about, like lower noise, buffer, you know, tweaking the controls to be easier to use, those kind of things. It really doesn't have any other major updates from the previous version. Next up, we have the distortion pedals. And unlike the overdrive pedals, not all of the distortion pedals have a built-in buffer. And that's because I didn't want to change the nature of the circuit by adding some sort of buffer circuitry that was different than the front end of what was existing. And so in some cases, it was natural to just utilize a buffer circuit that was essentially already present. And in other cases, it just wasn't going to work. In fact, out of all the distortion pedals, the Triumvirate is the only one with a buffered bypass option. All the rest are just true bypass. With the Alpha Dog, one of the main changes was reducing that thermal noise floor, but that actually made it more in line with the specs of the original sort of Proco Rat that it was derived from. And so I found that it seemed to uh, change the dynamics subtly to make it a little bit more open um, than the previous version of the Alpha Dog. This is one of the few pedals that doesn't take advantage of the charge pump. Many circuits are improved by having more headroom, more clean headroom, but this was one where its foundational sound is in the distortion of its operational amplifier. And so if I increase that voltage, it would take that signature sound away. Next up was the triumvirate. And one of the key things that I tried to do was make it easier to dial in lower gain sounds. Actual clipping configuration within each stage in the triumvirate is what you find in a tube screamer and a bunch of other overdrives. In some ways it has more in common with overdrive pedals, but its sound is more of a distortion when you add all those flavors together. That said, by enabling it to be able to tune in some of those lower gain sounds, you can actually use this as not just a multiband distortion, but also a multiband overdrive. The primary update I made to the distortion cube was to actually add in uh, a second op amp stage as a clean boost at the end because there were some settings, especially when you kicked in the germanium clipping that could get quite quiet. And so I added a little bit of extra boost at the end so that you could make sure that you could boost your signal no matter what setting you used. This is this graphic I'm definitely not using. <laughs> so the dark horse uh, combined the clipping switch and the compression knob into one control and then made a three band EQ to have some more tonal flexibility. The changes to the Dragon Hound were minimal and basically just all of those lower noise, higher headroom, all those sort of standard changes. 
With the old school tremolo, I went back towards the original first design, which did not have something that responded to the plane dynamics. Uh, I did that for two reasons. One, the speed range was fairly limited on the one that responded to plane dynamics. And two, I felt like there were other pedals that did that feature just, just better. And so I wanted to focus on what this could do better. And so I extended the speed range, but then I added this unique voicing control that affects how the tremolo responds in, uh, over its frequency range. So when it's full voice, that means all frequencies are going up and down like a sort of normal tremolo. And if you tune the voicing up, the higher frequencies will actually uh, experience a higher volume dip, a, a greater tremolo than the lower frequencies. So it'll take away some of that throb, but keep some of that you know vintage vibe going. And because of this voicing switch, if you use uh, lower levels of depth or even turning the depth all the way off, you can use this as kind of a nice boost because of the, the natural bass cut that it provides. The main design goal in updating the tractor beam was to create a true uh, depth knob or width knob. All the previous versions had a pseudo depth knob that was more like a center knob. Uh, it's, it's a little technical to get into like actual circuit part of it, but it didn't act like a true like width of the phaser sweep. And so that was the main thing that we updated here. Um, and then I took away the phase switching knob because if you can control the width, you don't need to change how many stages there are. The other thing that I am sort of tuning right now is to make sure that the that I can use a lower noise design but still have that same sort of phaser sweep but that's what I'm tuning right now that's why it's not actually in the pedal and lastly with the coral reef I'll just show you there are actually two delay lines in here and I'm still experimenting with it and the voicing and all that stuff there's also a trim pot to adjust sort of the maximum feedback level so that you could if you wanted to make it so the feedback knob went into self-isolation. Uh, but my design goal was to, uh, from a factory standpoint, to tune it to get close to that so that you could get to more extreme sort of feedback uh, sounds within the chorus flanger-esque thing, uh, but also be able to use uh, delay two different delay chips with different delay times. Um, and here we have an MN3007, and here's the MN3009. Um, and so I'm still, again, tuning some of the range of those controls and stuff like that. So that's why it's out of its container, but that's one of the biggest things. So the mode switch actually switches between the uh, chip with the faster delay time and the one with the lower. And actually, when you put it in the middle, they're both in at the same time. For EQ pedals, the only one that I've uh, finished the design for is the standout. The main change between the previous version is essentially gone back to what the focus was, where it had these separate uh, slope switches, but taking with it all of the improvements that came with the standout, improved lower noise, improved range, those kinds of things. It also has a buffered output as well, just like the standout. Uh, the Pinball EQ. Uh, is going to get a very similar upgrade to this. So, you know, the higher headroom and uh, lower, lower noise chip and some of those things. Um, but it's but the main sort of circuit feature here is that it will have, instead of one single switch controlling it, this pinball will have separate switches for the high pass and low pass, so you can control them independently. And lastly, the Rocket EQ design is getting an update in terms of having more clean headroom and having a buffered output, but overall isn't changing because all the changes I made uh, to the last version to significantly reduce the um, noise floor are things that are just going to sort of carry forward. Next, I'm going to briefly talk about some of the pedals with compressors in it. Uh, the main one being the White Horse, which is an optical compressor. The uh, main improvements that I made were to make this drive knob much more functional, meaning that as you turn it up, you can uh, get these sort of balanced controls where if you play lightly, the optical compressor is doing more of that and adding some nice sustain. But when you dig in, you're starting to get more uh, of the compression from the drive circuit. And so you're getting more of that dirt character. Um, and so you can kind of have this dynamic response between clean and dirty, but having some sort of compression all, on all the time. That plus like the additional clean headroom and a compressor is always welcome. And it's got a buffered output as well. The other pedals with compressors in them are the triplet and the bumblebee. The triplet will get some improvements to really lower the noise floor 
but mostly like improve the ability to tune in the controls to make the octave effects stronger. Some things that just, just enhance and improve what was already there, but no fundamental changes. The Bumblebee was a compressor with a swell feature in it. This is the one that's my biggest sort of design challenge as far as uh, having some level of uncertainty of whether I can really pull it off. Uh, but my design goal is it had a three-way switch to uh, toggle the, the range of the swell effect and I, that just really isn't necessary if the attack knob itself can have that full range by itself. And so that's what I want to do is, is to remove that switch, have the attack knob, have that range just built into the one knob. And then my goal is to add in a release knob so you can uh, control how fast the circuit sort of releases after it passes by that threshold, um, which would not only allow you to do swell effects, but kind of uh, make these other sort of uh, attack curves or whatever. Um, and even potentially, if, if, if I could do it right, use it as a you know, a noise gate. So that's what, what I'm looking at. Can I make a compressor and a swell like it has been before, but add this additional feature of controlling the release time? Okay, that's not all of the pedals, but that is a large percentage of them. Uh, if you have questions about any others, feel free to email me. Most of them, as you can see, are getting some minor tweaks. There's none that are going under this whole fundamental change because I want you, when you are pre-ordering, to have some confidence in what it's going to sound like. And so they'll stay true to sort of their roots so you have an idea of what they're going to sound like when you order them. If you've made it through this video so far, thank you for watching a long way. And I want to give you a sort of overview of the timeline. First of all, June 15th is my last day of teaching. And so after that point is when I'll start focusing more on getting the pedals uh, designs finished and manufactured um, and sort of really ramping up my time focused on that. My goal is to have the first batch of units shipped on June 30th. That will include the Standout and the Merman, and there'll be a few other pedals whose designs are basically ready to go right now. My goal by July 15th is to have at least the first draft of all 28 redesigned boards uh, completed and ordered um, so that I can do the next phase, which is sort of the final tweaking and improvements of the circuits. My goal by the end of July is to have at least 80% of the pre-orders fulfilled. That way I can slow down and give the proper time to some of the circuits that actually need more of my dedicated focus to perfecting and improving because some of the changes are really simple and as soon as I make them, it's like, oh, it sounds great move on. Um, but then there are other ones that are, uh, are, are going to need some more fine tuning and close listening um, and uh, to make it just sort of work the way that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to deliver to you. And so those ones will deliver in August. It's impossible to say exactly what all those ones are, but the ones that are most likely to deliver in August are, as I said before, the Bumblebee, um, probably the Mini Mew, trying to improve the sweep in the interaction and possibly even the tractor beam and the coral reef um, because there's some uncertainty in how long it's going to take me to try to get the sweep and the range and all these sort of fine details of those modulation just right.